Something that I love doing inside of Touch Designer is recoloring photos in interesting ways. Now, of course, there are the ways that we'd normally know about, which is, you know, maybe using something like a multiply. And in this case, what we can do is maybe make a constant, plug in our little photos here. And let's say we're gonna make this red. So now there's easy ways that we can do that. Obviously that's cool, but this doesn't offer us a lot of control. You know, what if we wanna make the blacks a different color versus the whites? Or what if we wanna have two tones with some, you know, third tone in the middle? We don't really have the control for just using simple things like multiply. So a really great creative technique that I like to use is actually using the lookup top. And this is a top that I find goes undervalued and underrated a lot of the time. So for example, I got both these pictures on Unsplash, they're just stock photography, but we can even take these and make these look really interesting. So when we're working with a look up top, your first input is always gonna be the source, the image that you wanna have colored. From there, our second input is going to be a lookup table that we're gonna provide. And in most cases, you can actually just use a ramp top for that lookup table. Now, as you get more advanced into this, you can use ramp tops or constant tops going into a layout top to kind of generate your own color palettes that are a bit more interesting than you know, what I'll make with the handles. But really quickly, we'll see already that I can do a very similar effect that I did before, which is let's say take the white handle on the right side here, take the white color, make it all the way red, and you can see we've got a very similar look to that multiply. But the really cool thing is, is I can control the whole spectrum how this lookup works. And the way the lookup works is it uses the darkest color, so if something is pure black, it's going to look it up on the left side and take the color from the left side of our ramp. And as the different pixel values get closer and closer to white, they're gonna scan through our ramp and take the different colors until white is all the way on the right side. So for example, if I wanted to make this into a little bit more of a pop art style piece, I could click on the first handle that I have here, and maybe even instead of black, do something like make my left handle green. And you can see here, it does this really interesting coloring where all of the darker colors start to take from the left side of my ramp, which is this bright green. All of the purely most white elements here, like the moon, take from the right side, which is red. But then everything in between has this free, beautiful gradient area to choose colors from. So now we get this really almost backwards sunset looking situation. Now the cool thing about this is how flexible it is to change the vibe of it. So for example, you know, we could do it a little bit of blue on the bottom side and all of a sudden it looks like something you'd maybe find on an iPhone case or something like that, some cool pop art. And then you can even extend this feature by adding more handles. So it doesn't just have to be, you know, a blue going into a red. Let's say we want the darkest colors to be maybe a dark blue, maybe in the middle of our ramp here, we want to have some kind of green. Let's go a little bit darker on the green. And then maybe before our red even, we wanna have a touch of this pink color. I guess that's more of a purple, not a pink. Yeah, it's, it's in between purple and pink. So you can already see we've taken this really straight ahead image of this landscape and been able to give it a really complex recoloring you know, that, that wasn't using masks. A lot of time I've seen people, you know, try and cut out the mask of the mountains, multiply that by something, cut out the moon, multiply that by something. But this gives us a really easy way to just create these really beautiful recolored pieces. And this doesn't just work on backgrounds by any stretch. So for example, I have this other picture here of what looks like a man warming up his hands on a stove of some sort. And if I go ahead and create a lookup top, plug that image into my first input, and then I'll go ahead and create a ramp as my second input. I could even do interesting things like, for example, if you wanted to start with a inverted, almost solarized look, you could take the left handle, set that to be white, take the right handle, set that to be black. Now that kind of looks very similar to just using a level top and doing an invert. So for example, if I make a level top, and I invert it, except the problem is we don't have much control over what happens after that. Whereas with our ramp top, we can say, you know what, maybe I wanna put a key in the middle and drag the darks over to the left a bit. Maybe I wanna make this a little bit more harsh. 
Or maybe on the flip side, I actually want to have less darks. I want this to be blown out a little bit more. Or even alternatively, maybe I want to have a, a third color in the mix here that tints the inversion a little bit. So that as things pass through the mid-tones before they get either to the extreme white or black, they can be tinted a totally different color. And this power really you're only going to find easily with access to inside of using a lookup top. Now lookup top also does some really interesting things where I find a lot of people enjoy using it with noise. So for example, if you generate some noise with a noise top, and what I'm going to do is go ahead and animate this noise a little bit with the transform and on the translate TZ, I'm going to type abs time dot frame multiplied by 0 0.5 and what that's going to do is going to take the absolute time and actually you know what I'll change this frame to seconds is better that's going to take the absolute counter of seconds so since the project started there's a seconds counter in the background and that's running and then I'm going to multiply it by five just to slow it down a little bit because if you haven't seen our other work if you multiply a value by more than one, it's going to speed up that ramp. And if you multiply it by a value less than one, it's going to slow it down. And then maybe what I'll do is turn up the period a little bit here, just so I can get a bit more of these blotchy, almost lava lamp-like look. I'm going to turn down the offset a little bit and increase the amplitude. And then what I can do is a couple of interesting things. So first off, if you've ever worked with any kind of more advanced types of maps or topography or heat maps, a lot of the time you're going to find those textures actually come in black and white. You know, even if you've seen them online with, you know, red being the hot spot and blue being the not hot spot, a lot of the time the base data layers of these textures actually look like this. They just are black and white texture with, you know, white spots here, black spots there. And it's actually up to you to recolor those in an interesting way. And a lot of the times the way that that gets colored is with this kind of lookup style of process. So I'll go ahead and make my lookup top here. Connect my noise to the first input and I'll make a ramp and connect it to my second input here. And let's say we were going to recreate this kind of heat map kind of look. So we know with a heat map all the way on the right is going to be probably a harsh red color. All the way on the left is probably going to be even a really dark blue. So let's actually turn these sliders up here. Get ourselves a dark blue. But then we've all seen heat maps and a lot of them have a, a really beautiful gradient that kind of goes from a really dark blue, you know, maybe to a light blue in between there. Maybe they even have a slight green area in the middle here before they ultimately reach that, you know, maybe there's a little bit of yellow and orange right around here, before they ultimately reach those red hot spots. Now the cool thing about this is it's totally a dynamic process. So even though we started with our still images here, it actually handles videos and dynamic textures really well. And we can see if we middle click on this, the cook time on this is really low. So as you're doing this with you know, 4K videos or a bunch of 1080 layers of videos, it actually scales up really well and doesn't impact your system too much compared to other ways that you might go about colorizing it. So we can even see here if I go ahead and make a movie file in top. And let me go ahead and select one of our default nature movies inside of the touch designer folder. I can plug these straight into those different recolored textures that I've created with the lookups. And we can see that dynamically, really easily with a low CPU and GPU usage, colorize those images. So I can even go and plug this down here. And we almost have a alien versus predator style heat map situation. Uh, what do they call it? Night thermal vision, thermal goggles, but you know, fake obviously, cause it's just using a regular texture. So I think this is a really great technique. I highly recommend people experiment with it just because it is so flexible in creating really interesting looks, but also allowing you to customize those looks in a really easy to use way without having to dive into shaders or even trying to make your own LUTs if you don't want to go down that road. The final thing I like doing with these kind of techniques is using it actually to colorize a displaced 3D geometry. 
So I already have this noise plugged in and this cool heat map style texture. So what I wanna go ahead and do is quickly create a grid SOP, plug that into a geometry comp, and then create a Fong material. Now on my geometry comps render page, I'll drag and drop my Fong onto the material. And then I'm gonna start mapping different elements to the materials maps. So I know for example that I want this texture to be representing the color. So I'll go ahead and drag and drop that on the color map. But then I can do a really cool and easy displacement by creating a normal map and a height map. So a quick trick to making a normal map is to just use the normal map top and we'll go ahead and plug in our original noise texture here. And you can't see too much behind there. You kind of just see some textures changing, but that's all right. That's more than enough information for a normal map. And then once I have a normal map assigned, I can go to this enable height map. And then now it wants a black and white mat that shows it, you know, how it white is gonna be tall and black is gonna be not displaced. So I can even just take this original noise top I have, drag that as the height map, and then quickly hit displace vertices. Now all of a sudden you can see in our viewer already without doing too much, we've got this really interesting kind of terrain being generated where the blue is looking like the water, you know, the green is looking like the land and the red is looking like the peaks. You might have seen those sandboxes that are interactive. They use a lot of these similar lookup techniques on their height maps coming from you know, whether you're using a Kinect or a Z camera. And just with these couple of operators, we can create this really easy dynamic 3D topography where the colorization of that topography matches the original source, you know, height map that we've generated here. So as you can see, lookup is extremely flexible. I use it all the time, whether it's 3D workflows or 2D workflows, and I hope you will too. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning touch designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.